Hey everyone, a very happy Holi to you all. Okay, so let's begin our current affairs because in order to make any day happy for ourselves, we need to give it a productive and good start. So I hope that this video may prove as a productive start for you to begin your day with. Now we have the first question that is which state established the first ever yoga commission in India. So here the right answer is Haryana. So guys, we are going to celebrate the International Yoga Day on 21st June, right? And uh, remember that this day is going to be the 8th edition of the International Yoga Day, okay? Now, since we are going to have the International Yoga Day on 21st June, therefore the Ministry of Ayush has launched the Yoga Mahotsav. Okay, and what is this Yoga Mahotsav? It is basically a celebration that will run till uh, that will run for 100 days till 21st June. Okay, from now onwards till 100 days till 21 June 2022, the Yoga Mahotsav will be celebrated. Now, this is very similar. The concept is very similar to the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Okay, during the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, you have seen many launches. Okay, every new initiative that is launched by the government, it is termed as a part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. And it is truly said also, we cannot criticize the government on that part because Azadi Ka Mahotsav in itself is not an initiative. It is just the declaration of an year, okay, giving the name of uh, name to the year. Okay, similarly, we are going to give the name to the 100 days that is Yoga Mahotsav. So during the Yoga Mahotsav, you may see the launches of new initiatives, the launches of new scheme probably or any application during the Mahotsav. Then guys, you won't have to get confused that Yoga Mahotsav is different and the initiative is different, etc, etc. Okay, I'm clarifying this right now. only. Now apart from this, there are certain things that we need to discuss. So we have discussed this, okay, Yoga Mahotsav. Now you also need to know that on this International Day of Yoga 2022, a new campaign will be run by the government of India and the theme of the campaign would be 100 days, 100 cities and 100 organizations. Now remember, this is guys the theme of the campaign and not the theme of the day. Okay. Now apart from this, during the launch event or the declaration event of the Yoga Mahotsav only, it was highlighted that for the first time, yoga will be demonstrated at 75 heritage or iconic cultural sites as part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Next point that was highlighted is the applications that are already there for promoting yoga, for spreading the information about healthy lifestyle. So we have M Yoga application of WHO, Namaste application and Y Break application. Okay. Then guys, another initiative that was in the highlight during the launch event was Haryana's Yoga Commission. So Haryana was the first state in India to establish the Yoga Commission. Then Ayush, Ministry, Ayush University is also going to be established by the state of Haryana only at Kurukshetra. So these are the two very important initiatives guys remember in the field of yoga. Then Sikkim guys has also announced to establish the National Yoga and Meditation Institute near Tritunga Lake in Sikkim. So guys here please remember that this lake is in Sikkim. Okay, because directly a question can be made on the lake. Now guys that was all about the Yoga Mahotsav. Let's discuss the next question. How many eat right stations are present in India? So here guys the right answer is 5. Now related to this question the news is that Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has in collaboration with FSSAI announced the 11 cities as winner of the East Eat Smart Cities Challenge. So what is this challenge? So guys Eat Smart Cities Challenge was launched under the Eat Right initiative of the FF, FSSAI. Okay. Now under this challenge basically there are two stages pilot one stage okay or the first stage is termed as the pilot one stage and the second stage is termed as the scale stage scale up stage okay now these 11 cities have been selected as winners under the pilot stage and now they will be given the opportunity to scale up their efforts in the scale up stage under this challenge now the basic purpose of this challenge is to recognize the efforts made by these cities towards promoting or uh, healthy writing healthy eating habits okay so this is all about the eat smart cities challenge now we also need to discuss about the eat right initiative so guys the initiative was launched in 2018 by fssai and the basic purpose is very clearly 
conveyed from its name itself that is to spread the awareness about the uh, healthy lifestyle healthy eating habits and also ensuring safe healthy and sustainable food for all indians okay now there is a tagline of this initiative as well that is sahi bhojan behtar jeevan so guys this tagline is very aptly conveying the meaning or the objective for which the eat right movement was launched now guys there are certain initiatives launched by fss ai to promote the eat right movement so first initiative is state food safety index now guys this initiative was launched to measure the performance of states on five parameters of food safety so here we have human resource and institution data as the first parameter then compliance food testing infrastructure and surveillance then we have training and capacity building and consumer empowerment so these are the five parameters on which the states and union territories are given ranking and the basic objective is to create a a competitive spirit among all the states and union territories so that they perform well and then the ultimate objective of spreading the eat right movement increases or it is achieved okay now we have eat right awards and the basic purpose of these award is to recognize and con- recognize the contribution of food companies and individuals towards spreading the eat right movement and also towards adopting the eat right habits okay uh, sustainable food habits by the food companies or the individuals who are engaged in the food ecosystem food supply chain then we have eat right mela and guys this is the initiative that will directly spread the awareness about the healthy eating habits among the public next we have the eat right station so this is the last but not the least initiative so under this initiative basically fssai grants the certification to railway stations okay and the basic purpose of giving this initiative is to the certification is to encourage the railway stations so that they uh, they provide healthy food to their passengers and right now we have five eat right stations in india and these are chandigarh railway station anand vihar station chhatrapati shivaji terminus and we have vadodara railway station guys the latest one to add in this list was chandigarh railway station okay but remember these are the five stations and their locations and their names are very important for you all to remember now let's move on to the third question how much is the share of india in the global arms import according to sipri trends in international arms trade 2021 so guys this is the annual report released by sipri and according to this report india's share is 11% in the global import market of arms so let's discuss this news in detail first of all sipri stands for stockholm international peace research institute and it releases the trends in international arms transfers report on a regular basis so for 2021 this report has been released now according to this report the major importers of arms during 2017 to 2021 are india saudi arabia egypt australia and china now guys india and saudi arabia both of them account for 11% individually okay 11% india 11% saudi arabia so guys this is the largest share that a single country is having okay so both of these countries are having this much amount of imports in the field of arms okay next we have egypt australia the, these two countries are not very significant from india's geopolitical scenario but china is china is our land bordering country plus the very immediate rival that we have at the present scenario is also china so china is also guys not independent or not self reliant when it comes to arms okay so it imports 4.8% of arms now guys this percentage is the percentage from the global arms import market okay so we are analyzing the total global arms imports and out of the total 4.8% is imported by china okay now if we talk about india's basket of importers or oh, sorry india's bas- basket of suppliers in the arms imports then we have russia as the major major supplier of arms for india okay so for both both these periods india was the largest supplier however the imports the share of imports that india was importing from russia has fell by 47% this is primarily because india is trying to become self reliant in the defense sector at the same time india is also trying to diversify its supply chain okay and it has become all the more important in the present scenario then we have france 
coming up as the second largest supplier of arms to India during 2017 to 2021 and this is primarily because India tried to diversify its supply chain okay now we have major exporters of arms during this period so US Russia France China and Germany accounted for 77 percent of total exports then guys remember that these this is the rank wise order so US first Russia second France China and Germany are following them okay so US account for 39 percent of the global arms export Russia accounts for 19 percent of the global arms export and remember that Russia's share in the global arms exports has reduced by 26% and now it is definitely going to reduce further from 19% with all the sanctions imposed on Russia. Okay, along with India, China, Egypt and Nigeria, all these three countries are major importers of Russian arms and obviously they are going to uh, face problems with the swift ban on Russia because payment may or problem either to fill how will the trade take place okay plus uh, Russia uh, these countries will also face pressure from the western world okay because right now the west is putting a lot of pressure on India as well to stop the rupee ruble trade that the India and Russia uh, are right now planning to do okay so guys that was the Cypri's report. I hope that you have understood the report well. Now we are moving on to the next question. So which has become the first state in India to start the recording of crop diversification patterns in the form of an index. So here guys the right answer is option A Telangana. Okay. So basically through the medium of this index the state government of Telangana will assess the crop diversification practices that are running in the state okay and what kind of measures does the government need to take in order to promote crop diversification so all of this work will be done through this index okay information will be given and on the basis of the information the government will make the policies accordingly okay so that was enough from uh, this news apart from this don't go in too much detail the things that are mentioned here are for your information purpose okay from ARD point of view of NABARD this is important however ARD is not going to come right now we have just seen NABARD examination getting over but still a general information ho a general awareness ho to ye bahut achha rehta hai aapke liye thik hai next question is in which state was the Bhu Aadhaar recently launched so guys Assam is the right answer what is this Bhu Aadhaar unique land parcel identification number Okay, so this is guys termed as the Aadhaar card for the land that is Bhu Aadhaar. Okay, so it has been launched in Assam recently and remember that this initiative is the initiative of Department of Land Resources under Ministry of Rural Development. Now this initiative basically aims to resolve the grievances of the farmers or the land owners okay, regarding the holding of the land because land records will be streamlined and on the basis of that streamlined database UL pin will be allocated to the landholder and this will guys reduce the disputes on land okay now we have discussed the central initiative we also have Assam government initiative for streamlining the land records only so mission Basundra was launched by the Assam government to streamline the land records and fast pace the grievance redressal mechanism now remember UL pin initiative which also has the same function was launched under the Digital India Land Records Modernization Program, which is being implemented in India since 2018. Okay, I hope that this news is clear. So now let's move on to the next question. Where is Rashtriya Gram Swaraj Abhiyan under implementation? So guys, it is Jammu and Kashmir. Why is it particularly in the news? Because the budget for the Jammu and Kashmir for 2022 to 2023 was presented by Ministry of Finance or basically approved by the Finance Ministry in Lok Sabha. So guys, when this was uh, presented because of the Kashmir Files movie, okay? So those who have seen the Kashmir Files so far, please give me the reviews in the comment section below, whether it is worth watching or not. Because I think that there is a lot of hype uh, around this movie and for example Tandav web series ke around hua tha, kitna hype create ho gaya tha, but what was the use kuch bhi nahi nikla usme hai na? i don't want to see uh, just a second 
I don't want to waste my time on this movie. So if you have already seen it, so please provide me the reviews. Okay, coming back to this news again. So the total budget allocated to Jammu and Kashmir is one point four two lakh crores. Schemes that were highlighted in the budget. First is integrated ship development scheme, obviously for developing the ship ship economy in the union territory. Parvas scheme. So, what is the purpose? The purpose, guys, is to provide the subsidies on the air freight so that the goods can be transported by air. Okay, what kind of goods? The goods that are perishable in nature. For example, vegetables and fruits. Okay, so these uh, fruits will be will also be exported to Middle East countries and various other cities. Now we have Rashtriya Gram Swaraj Abhiyan. So, the basic purpose of this. initiative is to build the capacity of the officials that are working in the rural areas of jammu and kashmir and also providing internet connectivity to the gram panchayats next we have centers for in invention innovation incubation and training uh, at jammu and srinagar so guys these two this center will be established at two places at jammu and at jammu and srinagar and this will be established along with tata technologies guys remember tata technology because from your question can be framed now 14 milk villages will, will be established and the purpose of these would be to increase the milk production so that was all about the budget of jammu kashmir now we are on the next question where is the helicopter engines mro private limited a joint venture between hal and saffron established so guys it is in satari where is satari located so it is located in goa clearly we can see that it's a joint venture between ha hal and saffron so this is the news guys now let's move into the news directly so hindustan aeronautics limited and saffron which is a france based aircraft engine manufacturing company both of these organization have come together to establish this joint venture at satari in goa and guys basically this joint venture this company would start operations by the end of 2023 now this is a very uh, insignificant point you can uh, skip this point clearly now guys the facility will have a capacity to repair 50 engines per year and the target is to increase the increase this capacity to 150 engines what is the purpose of establishing this company basically to repair the engines that are used in the aircrafts developed by hal okay so apart from this both these companies have also signed an mou for exploring the opportunities for developing helicopter engines for the civil market and for the military markets okay civil markets like you have private helicopters as well so unke liye bhi engine banana aur unki repairing maintenance operations ke liye bhi ye log work karenge abhi uske liye sirf mou sign kiya hai so this facility will provide maintenance repair and overhaul services for the engines of the helicopters okay so these two are the engines hal shakti engine and saffron tm333 engine okay hal shakti guys is the indian variant of saffron uh, adridan 1h1 engine only okay so do remember these two engines are primarily the focus of this new joint venture now the hal cmd is r maruti next question is geneva conventions and their additional protocols 1949 form the um regulates the conduct of armed conflict and seeks to limit its effect how many conventions are collectively called the geneva conventions so guys why is it in the news suddenly the reason is the russia ukraine war okay so russia is claim uh, russia is violating this geneva convention okay as per the countries as per the status quo and because of this it is in the news so how many conventions form Geneva Convention four is the right answer. So let's have a look at the Geneva Convention as well. So guys, Geneva Convention and its additional protocol, all of these were adopted in nineteen forty nine, and the basic purpose is to con control or regulate the conduct of armed conflict. Okay, like we are seeing in Ukraine, what is whatever is happening in Ukraine is the armed conflict, and what kind of uh aid is there for the injured military officials for the civilians that are living in ukraine that is guys provided in the geneva convention okay for the uh, now before moving into the details of this convention let's have a look at the number of countries that have joined so we have 196 countries as part of this um geneva convention okay now let's discuss the conventions 
first convention guys provides for the human treatment of the injured soldiers it also prohibits the use of torture assault upon the personal dignity and execution without judgment okay so it basically gives the right to the injured soldiers okay uh, to present their case uh, if um, they are caught by the other country okay so there is no execution they would not be killed without judgment then convention 2 human treatment to shipwrecked soldier and other naval forces so this is primarily for the naval soldiers convention 3 prisoner of war the soldiers who are kept by the other party and then uh, the people who are taken away the, by the other party so all of their all of these people are called prisoners of war so they should be given human treatment uh, there should be a prohibition of use you prohibition of torture uh, for extraction of information we see that the soldiers who are caught are tortured a lot tortured to hell like hell like situations are there for them so this geneva convention prohibits that torture okay then prisoners of war should be given uh, should be allowed to give their names rank serial number to their captors so guys this kind of inf information can only be extracted by the captors okay but we see that in every war in every armed conflict there is a clear violation of all these conventions so let's have a look at the fourth convention as well that provides for the protection of the civilians that are living in the war zone okay so that these were the four conventions of which we see the violation in every kind of war so guys the ninth question that we have here is indus and creon produces 45% to 54% of neon that is used in chip manufacturing around the world are located in which country so guys here ukraine is the right answer so i hope that you know why is it in the news because these two these two companies have been shut down and because they produce a lot of neon that is used in the semiconductors so we are definitely going to see a shortage of semiconductors in the international market in the coming months so guys that is the entire news all about so let's have a look at the percentage that percentage of world's neon that ukraine produces so it is 25% guys a very huge uh, percentage one quarter So neon guys is a byproduct of steel manufacturing and chip makers take away 75% of the global demand for neon and the rest 25% is used in industrial lasers and lasik eye surgery as well okay so this was the news about the semiconductors and the neon gas which of the following is the birthplace of bhagat singh so guys banga is the right answer which is now in pakistan why precisely are we discussing about bhagat singh all of a sudden when we do not have any uh, birth anniversary or death anniversary of bhagat singh near in the near future the reason is that the punjab's chief minister bhagwant man has taken oath at the ancestral uh, village of bhagat singh okay so guys uh, the place where khatkar kalam the place where bhagat man has taken the oath is guys the ancestral village of bhagat singh and if this is in the news it's our responsibility to cover the associated facts but what kind of associated facts birth anniversary of bhagat singh 28 september 1907 death of bhagat singh 23 march 1931 oops but death is very near 23 march ko we are going to observe the death anniversary of bhagat singh now the place is banga okay where he was born a lot of controversy is there that uh banga is the place of birth then why is khatkar kalan given the status of the native village of bhagat singh so this is all there in the news that's why it can be asked in the examination where will the 44th world chess olympiad 2022 be organized so guys chennai mein organize kiya jayega by the all india chess federation from 26 to 8th august remember the addition guys who is the author of monsoon so monsoon guys is basically a poem okay remember it's a poem and the length of this poem is equivalent to a length of a book now it is written by abhay kumar so guys this book was published by sahitya academy and remember that sahitya academy uh, observed its foundation day as well so it has published this book by indian diplomat abhay kumar and now let's have a look at the facts related to sahitya academy as well so it was established on 12th march in 1954 and its logo was designed by satyajit ray himself and pandit jawahar lal nehru was his was its first president the first book that was published by the sahitya academy was 
uh, Bhagwan Buddha by B. B. Goshamdi in 1956. It was basically a translation uh, from Marathi to Hindi. So, guys, that was all for today. I hope that you were not bored during the lecture and you have enjoyed the lecture. If you have really enjoyed the video, then do not forget to subscribe the channel, hit the bell notification, or and yes, information for you all is PDF is available on the Telegram channel. Go to the Telegram channel, download the PDF, keep learning, and retain the facts for a longer period of time. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. And again, a very happy holy to you all.